You know, I had a surprising number of people write in and ask me about how I should handle uh, live events and like lecturing in a university or lecturing in a corporate setting uh, or doing special events in like a corporate setting because they, they saw our video on Webcaster, which is from Epifan. And uh, I talked to Epifan about it. And I was like, well, you know, it would be nice if you had an industrial strength version of Webcaster because Webcaster has some limitations. I mean, it's, it's good for, for uh, you know, streaming, uh, you know, an event, single camera source, that kind of thing. And they said, funny you mention that. We have another product that is actually popular with businesses and universities, and it's called the Pearl 2. And they just relaunched their device. I guess it was called the Pearl, and now they have the Pearl 2. So they sent one over because you guys liked the last skit so much. The Pearl 2 is basically everything you need for live production in a box. And the reason that I agreed to take a look at it was because it will handle six 1080p input streams. Uh, goodness. And it will also like record and save up to six 1080p, you know, 30 FPS input streams. It'll also handle up to two 4K input streams and record and encode one 4K stream as well. But it does it all in a box without really sort of having any, any headache or anything like that. Now it is a pricey device if you look up the price, uh, you know, depending on the configuration, depending on uh, some other factors, you can get it in a, in a handy travel portable version, which is the version I've got here. You can also get it in a rack mount configuration for, for standard issue stuff. But after messing around with this thing, it really is a powerful piece of hardware in terms of what it does and what it would let you do for live streaming and corporate events, that sort of thing. If you've got a keynote that you need to capture, like if you're going to do an interview with somebody really important on stage in front of a lot of people and you want a portable, basically bulletproof setup, this device is probably what you want. Let's unpack it and take a look. So if you get the non-rack mount version, it ships to you basically exactly like this. You've got a really nice hard shell plastic. Oh my goodness travel case <clears throat> look at that and everything that you need is in here now the device itself is only 10 pounds but you can tell this is made for uh, people that are on the road a lot and uh, doing a lot of traveling and that sort of thing so look at that look how much padding that is here is the device itself. This is basically a computer with a 512 gig SSD, but it's also got a lot of Epifan's video capture hardware built right in as well. And good Lord, this thing is powerful. In the box, we've got an assortment of power cables, network cable, HDMI, SDI for uh, high definition video input. It's a 12G SDI input. There are two of them actually. And one HDMI to DVI adapter in case you're, you know, dealing with DVI as an input or as an output. So this has got a built-in touch screen on the front for controlling the device, uh, power button, USB, headphone, um, and then on the back, you can see we've got a number of connectors. Now there are four XLR inputs on the back. Do note that phantom power is not supported. There's also a left and right input as well for RCA jacks. We've got four HDMI inputs, two that are 4K, two that are standard def, and then we've got two uh, 12G SDI inputs. Then we have two HDMI outputs and a, an A and a B USB 3.0, as well as gigabit ethernet. There's also an RS-232 uh, port. And if you're a programmer or into somebody that's into API control, you can actually use the serial port to control scripting and movement through the devices and, and that sort of thing. So if you wanna use, you know, this is basically like part of a low budget studio, or like a low budget production house and you want to chain a bunch of these together, you can totally do that programmatically however you want with your own custom software. In fact, there's a rack mount version of this. It's actually two of these side by side so you can chain them together. You can send a bunch of inputs into one, set up the scenes, group however you want, and then send the output of that one into the input of the other one and then chain in a bunch more inputs that way as well, depending on, on what you're doing. So it's kind of neat and scalable in that regard. Now, one feature about this device uh, that's just really mentioned as kind of a footnote, but I think really deserves special attention, is that it can actually use IP cameras 
as an input. So if you have an IP camera like this grand stream, you know, 1080p, 60 FPS network camera, you can network the camera and actually use networked cameras like that as an input for the Pearl 2. So if you've got a, you know, a lecture hall or something like that, and you have some fixed cameras that are installed as part of the installation, then you have a studio camera that you're using as your primary camera, you can mix and match all of those sources with this particular device for video production, which is really handy. Now the Pearl 2 has a web interface as well, where you can configure all the options. The idea is that you use the web interface and you configure all your options and your inputs and all this kind of thing. And then you basically set up the touch screen so that when you get to where you're going, you can just touch it and you're good to go. Now, in terms of like the features that you would expect of, you know, broadcast quality equipment, you know, never crashes and doesn't do weird stuff and has time synchronization and those kinds of things. This is made for the studio. It is made for people that have experience with broadcast and digital broadcast and all of the little wrinkles that go with that. I mean, we use Open Broadcaster on a discarded medical cart, basically, for all of our live streaming and all of our recorded streaming and, and all of those kinds of things. But, but this, when you're working in the enterprise, when you're working with business class stuff, it's a little different. And so with the SDI inputs, and with the, uh, the HDMI inputs, keeping all of that in sync is a lot easier. So if you're doing a multi-camera setup and you've got multiple 1080p cameras, you can just capture everything back to here in hardware and not have to worry about that, not really worry about anything crashing or being weird. Open Broadcaster on Linux is a thing, but it's definitely more stable than Open Broadcaster on Windows. But you know, even Open Broadcaster on Linux, still with some distributions, they bundle a version of Open Broadcaster that has memory leaks and that sort of thing. If you don't have time to do that, or better yet, you're in a situation where a corporation or business or a university has come to you and said, hey, what do you got for this situation? You should really give this thing a look because it really ticks a lot of boxes in that use case. So we've got our web interface pulled up here and we can add channels. Right now there's just the HDMI 4K B and the Auto B. So I'm gonna add a channel for channel A in 4K, uh, which will be this camera, which is what I initially tried, but then it's like, well, it's just channel B or the other B. So uh, we can do a new layout and customize like picture in picture or side by side or do like a four up or whatever. Um, we could even take four 1080p inputs and mash those up into a 4K signal if we wanted to and then send that on down the pike. That's completely fine. Now in terms of like being able to stream 4K, yes, this can totally do it. In terms of this thing streaming multiple 4K signals, no, not so much. You can handle two 4K inputs and then combine that into one 4K stream, however you want to do that picture-in-picture picture scaling, whatever, uh, but really you're better off with capturing 1080p or 1080p 60. Now for 1080p 60 inputs, it will do two 1080p 60 inputs um, and then you can use other stuff. Now I mentioned before it does IP cameras. It'll also do USB cameras. So you can use your USB 3.0 interfaces here if you need like a control room camera or like a, you know, a low resolution USB webcam type thing will suit you just fine, you can add that as well. Maybe you have a USB webcam document camera or something like that that you wanna capture, you can totally do that. So here on the uh, source of status page, we can see under the auto B that, you know, here's the stream info and, and where it is, you know, that we can get the channel to. Now this is a URL where we can actually pick up the channel. So we could pass this URL to another program uh, and restream it or capture it or whatever. This is really important in university scenarios where they may already have some stuff for dealing with live lectures or lectures in general. You can just capture this as a stream directly off of the uh, URL. Now I've added a new channel, channel three here, but as you can see, there's nothing here yet. I'm gonna hit add a new item and we're gonna do video source. Now we could also add picture or text. So this could be a fixed source if you needed to toggle between say title slides or something like that. You can set all that up in the web interface so that when your show is live, you can toggle between the different things and then a feed of the stage. So maybe you've got somebody at a lectern on stage and you've got a, a really nice zoom lens cropped in on exactly where they are on the stage. Um, then maybe you've got uh, the slides or maybe you've got some text or maybe you've got input from a computer running, you know, a keynote or PowerPoint or whatever. Or maybe you've got an After Effects presentation that you've got queued up on another computer that's beside you. You can switch between those slides and then just toggle between these interfaces, either through the touch screen or even through the web interface as well. I'm gonna switch the camera from the B input to the A input. Then we can see that we can get a little preview of what's going on with that HDMI A input actually in our web browser to do our layout here. Now, as you can see, we've got this GUI tool for resizing the layout and, and whatever we might wanna do as far as picture in picture or placement. 
Maybe we want to have two side by side in this one. However we want to do this, we can do it right here in the web interface. And you can see on the left-hand side here, uh, the multitude of sources. I mean, it doesn't sound like much when you look at the back and it's like, well, I see two SDI, 12G connectors and four HDMI connectors. Yeah, but you can also do audio uh, inputs through the XLR. You can also capture audio through the HDMI. So like you pipe audio through this camera, through, through a little G85 camera here and actually send the audio in through HDMI. We also do USB capture. We can also do IP cameras. So those IP cameras that I was mentioning, we can add those as a source, no problem. For our output ports, HDMI 1 and 2, we can configure those similarly. We can say, what is our source? Is our source a channel or is our source a raw input? Maybe you want to keep an eye on your actor that's on the stage at all times or your presenter that's on stage at all times. You can take his camera and map it directly to HDMI output 1. Maybe output HDMI out, output 2, you want to see what you're actually sending to the projector or actually sending to the stage or whatever. So you can have both of those outputs from this thing with two different previews. You can also toggle between them by just coming in here and changing the input. Now 512 gigs internally sounds great. What if you need more? Well, you can use the USB 3 for external storage. You can come in the menus here, external USB drive. How is USB storage to be treated? Well, it can be used for a one-time move copy of files. It can be used to manually move things. It can be used to automatically store and copy recorded files. So depending on what your use case is and what you wanna do, you can use an external USB drive however you see fit. Now, one of the most powerful features of this device that I have not really seen anybody else mention is the ability to back up and restore your configuration. Let's say that you run you know, an equipment rental outfit or an agency, or maybe you work with three or four different clients on events like this, and you need to be able to sort of set it up the way that each client wants on the fly. It can be a lot of work to configure all these sources and the different inputs and what cameras you're gonna have and how the show's gonna be that kind of thing. Well, you can come into the maintenance section and actually back up your configuration, save it on a file, and then restore your configuration later. So you can you can create a configuration preset and then you can import a configuration preset. So you can you know, set up the presets that clients use for maybe they've got a yearly show or a quarterly show or whatever, you can back it up however they want. So as you do the show from year to year, it's probably not gonna change much. You can restore the configuration without having to remember exactly what you did and without having to do you know like super laborious super detailed documentation of exactly how every screen is now in the recorder you can set it up to either record the raw sources or to record you know a channel that you've set up that may include one or more sources from the individual devices um, do keep in mind the limitations with setting up recorders in terms of like if you're capturing two 4k streams you're only going to be able to record one finished 4k stream or stream one finished 4k stream but you should be able to record the two 4K 30 FPS streams, you know, just raw before you're actually messing with them or doing any kind of compression or anything like that. Uh, but you can configure all of that again through the web GUI. And then whatever you configure here, when you touch the record button on the actual touch screen interface, it's gonna run with that recording profile or it'll ask you which recording profile you wanna use and you can, you know, do it through the uh, touch interface. And so there you have it, the Epifan Pearl 2. Now this thing was so tempting, we're gonna try our own like super high energy. We're gonna use this in a production and that's in another video that's linked in the description. And uh, it's sort of our send up to high energy, over the top, insane, oh my God, check it out, ah, oh, 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 videos. So yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Uh, let us know what you think about all that. Let us know what you think about these. If you pick up one of these for professional purposes or whatever, I'm Wendell and I'll see you in the forums.